but it heavy. Like we never like lose service or anything. You know, that's surprising. It is pretty reliable for some country backwater. Like it's DSL. never down. Like it just never goes down ever. Like the only time it's ever down is if we have like no power in the house, period, which we wouldn't even it's probably still up then, we just wouldn't know it. <laughs> It, I mean, it's. It seems like the streaming like will crash at a, at least once a time. If I play for two hours, it'll crash once. Okay. So, I, I, sorry, I'm back in. Okay. I'm just checking there, and I'm gonna make note here. Thirty-one minutes. Okay. Do you have a pen? Write that down. Thirty-one minutes. I do not. Uh, oh, there's a pen in your desk. Yeah, there is. Okay. There it is. Okay. Just write it down somewhere. All right. Okay, stream's back up. Sorry about that, guys. I had a little bit of a streaming issue. Just want to write this down so I know how to edit it out of here. All right. Um, Is it 31 minutes? Yep. Okay. We're good. Sweet. The joys of live shows. They're always fun. All right. Now, with that being said, uh, we talked to... Before Delta got lost, the last thing we were moving <laughs> on was uh, they talked about what's coming in Update 5. But we're going to skip that section because we're actually going to talk about that in full uh, next um, but the Guild Summit happened, and uh, it was pretty awesome, because if you haven't been paying attention, we talked about that for the past two weeks now, and that was really awesome. Kipster, what, what did you think about the Guild Summit as a whole? Uh, it was pretty freaking awesome. Uh, what other game out there does stuff like this? Just invites everybody, well not everybody, but a group of people out there just to talk and tell them about their game. It's awesome. I think uh, Zen Max should invite the uh, Tales of Tamriel crew next time, but I agree, it was pretty awesome. They should, they should. Yeah, we should. I, I'm still, I like, I send uh, community messages to them going, hey, you know, you're only like four hours from me or three <laughs> hours from me. We could come down, could we visit? Like, They have seriously? you on spam mail. Yeah, they probably do just filter me out. Now. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying to get a developer on here too, but you know, they, they ignore me, so I'm sad. So... Zenimax, if you're listening, straight to spam. Anyone who wants to come on uh, the show, or if you want, you can invite us all down. We'll all come down. Hey, we'll even do a live show Ooh. in your office. Ooh, Ooh. yeah, how you like that? That'd be pretty awesome, right? Uh, I don't know. Just try anything I can. Well, you got you got their attention on Twitter. <laughs> that true. is true. You just There's need to get so pregnant to more often. You got our foot in the door. To get pregnant more often, it's fine. Get pregnant more often. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I'm going to send them a, a baby shower invitation and on, like, the wish list of things like, you know, like, this is what we're, we're registered at your office, so visit yeah. times anytime you want. The Bethesda store? The Bethesda store. <laughs> Register at the Bethesda store. That'd be great. <laughs> All right. But, yeah, uh, Delty, what did you think about Guild Summit? Oh, I mean, it's just bananas. I mean, no one, no one does this type of stuff. Come on, this is crazy. I love right. it. I love it. It's just, yeah. You know, like I said, I really wanted to go too, so I can yap about stuff. But I'd probably be the only one talking in there. Um, I, I don't know. I, I was listening to the, the audio recordings, and I think you'd have a hard time with Atropos because he was all over that. Like every five seconds, have you thought about this? Is that who that was? <laughs> yeah. Oh, <okay. laughs> I love that guy. He's great. Well, I think you know people like me, him, maybe or whoever. We're passionate about this game. We want to see it succeed. We want to see it balanced. We want to see it perfect. It'll never be perfect, but if you're passionate about it, that's where all these concerns come from. Is that you know we want it to be right by the gamers, and I mean they're listening, obviously. So just mm -hmm. stick with it and just be positive, and that's that's the kind of environment that we want as gamers. Is something you don't want to see people trashing the game or each other in guild chat or in general chat. And you know there's going to be a couple meatballs, but at least McFluffy Fluffy Pants isn't running around left and right in this game. We do have a fantastic community in the game. As I, you know, in other games specifically, you know, Warcraft, other games like that, I turn my general chats off. This game I've never had to. Like, the first week was a little rough, yeah. you know, because yeah. whatever. But now I don't, because almost every time someone says something in zone or anything like that, it's relevant, they have questions, or it's something of note that's, hey, I'm glad I know that now. It's not, you know, trollish all the time. All right, we're going to move on to the next little bit of this uh, road ahead, the loyalty program. So they announced the three-month loyalty reward, the High Rothgar pet, which was pretty neat looking. I like him. I like him a lot. 
Um, and they'll be talking about the six month reward soon. I'm excited. I am excited. Mount, come on. Or Mount. maybe that dog pet that you. Oh want my to god! Have. If it was a dog pet, I'd renew my sub for like five years. <laughs> I would. Dog pet I would lifetime sub. I would no lifetime no sub. Thing. <laughs> I'd make it Take rain like money. a strip club on New Year's. It would be crazy. <laughs> He'd be making it rain for Zenimax. <laughs> Speaking of, on a related note, we'll be, <laughs> they will be making collectible pets uh, out of our inventory soon with their own collections UI. Keep Wait, your pack just pets? A you use plural. Pets. <laughs> I know they're doing oh, pets he, and collectibles. He actually ruined that entire sentence. We'll be moving collectibles like pets out oh, of yeah. their inventory Terrible. soon and into their own collections UI. See what I said, Kipster? See, if you actually read what I read, I, it's not even like <laughs> legit words. English wasn't his fourth language. It wasn't. I I don't see how. Who taught you how to read? I mean, them, really. Them words. Them words. Them words. Hey. <laughs> Silly. Oh, God. All right. Next up, Cyrodiil. <laughs> he talks about Cyrodiil a little bit, and um, you know, stability and performance improvements that are done throughout Cyrodiil are in the works as of now. There's a client crash bug yep. that has affected a few people. Have you have you hit that Delta? Every day. What are you Still? doing exactly when that happens? Do you know? Or? Uh, this is a PG third. No, uh, I it just, it just crashes. I mean, I'll be like running into a keep. Boom! My character freezes and my game crashes. Or I'll be <laughs> just you know switching bars. It crash. It's just no one specific thing particularly. Okay. It's just it crashes. I mean, there's so much going on the screen. I you know it's I give them a little break on it. Uh, so Cyrodiil's always been a little bit of a. But, I mean, think about it. What game has that big of an open environment? It's going to have some stability yeah. issues. And, I for I mean, for that big of an environment, we've got flaming oil graphics. you got siege weapons. The walls are going down. Players' animations. I mean, to be honest, it's pretty reliable for what's going on. If you look at it in an objective way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, other open world games. Uh, there is like, none. I mean, it's either... No, there's not. No, like, it's not. It, to be that open world, it's like... And like what you said, you were going over a cliff the other day, and you saw, like, this light sh shimmering in. That's mm -hmm. beautiful. You really oh, feel like you're a part of the war. And does it get zergy? Yeah. But I think the uh, the camp thing that they're looking at doing, the improving, is really going to make a big difference when it goes live. And that means so the troll camps don't happen anymore. Hmm. I don't know if you guys know what troll camps are, but it's, isn't that where they place a, uh, the camp like in the middle, like somewhere that's not even near the the keeps that are being attacked? They'll place yeah, so that way you can't place it at the keep that you want. So they'll they'll level up level ten characters on a separate account and then basically block you from taking the last keep to get the emperor. I know people would do that um, when they were essentially trading wins. One of the things they would do is they'd have someone log in. Yep. And place like twenty oils in a random position on the keep that proves nothing. It's not even useful, but it uses up all the siege, so no one can defend with siege. So the defenders would actually get there who are trying to defend, and some troll would be up there with twenty oils just sitting there going, "Yep, nope, you can't place anything." So yeah, it's. I really am curious as what Imperial City is going to bring because for me, I like to get in and get out. Cyrodiil's fun with no forward camps. It would be a lot of really, really tactical stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think that's great. But you have to have something for people to get in and get out. Where I can, boom, queue up, get in, five minutes of riding, I'm in the fight, and I can fight for two hours and mindlessly have fun and kill people and die. That's what it is right now. I love it like that. Give me hmm. something small and really fast-paced. It doesn't take a long time to get into. Then turn Cyrodiil into a really tactic, group-oriented battle. I think it would bring a lot to the PvP community. I think you'd get a lot of people back. Um, the arena players, the competitive players, would come to this game if it were like that. Oh, yeah. I think there needs to be a little something like that. Because the way Cyrodiil is, it's Dark Age of Camelot's realm versus realm system. But that was something you invested in for... A long time it was you know when you held a keep that would like i remember guilds who would have like beepers and stuff 
for when your guild was being attacked, like someone would send a note to your beeper, get up to defend our keep because people are attacking it. People would hold keeps for months. Like they didn't change hands as often as they do now. But, but it's hard to hold. I mean, it, because it's a, it's a Zerg thing. I mean, if you got a hundred people, you could have twelve of the best players in the world. It's going to be hard to hold that thing. Right. You know. So. Right. Well, I think DOAC did some interesting stuff. Like there wasn't AOE caps in the early times, so one siege oil could kill off an entire Zerg. If you drop burning oil on top of a bunch of people and they weren't getting healed, all of them would die. All of them. Yeah, and they're making those changes too, so that because the the AOE caps does bring the the mentality. But we went in Saturday this uh, yesterday and had a lot of fun in Cyrodiil, and you know we died a couple times, but. I like the forward camps because you're close to your friends, and it's not like one person dies, you have to go pick them up. And so it makes it a fun, really fast-paced environment, and I, I like it for what it is right now. You know, as much as they're worried about Cyrodiil, Guild Wars 2 had the giant world versus world system, too. It wasn't quite as big as this, but still, it's the world versus world, and they had structured PvP, like the Battlegrounds-type zones. So did Warhammer. And both were active. Both were fun. Yeah. You're going to have different people who want to do different things in large groups. For me, I like fair versus fair. If there's four people on each side, it's not a numbers game. It's who can focus target, who can heal, who can handle pressure. That's what I like. Because And there's always going to be this person has better gear or whatever. But I like that because you know what you're going up against. There's no secrets. Getting ganked by 20 people, come on. You know, that's, some of that stuff's derpy. But... Yeah, they need both. Really, this game can handle both. The populations, I think, is getting, getting figured out, too. Uh, but I honestly think this population is steady and growing. You think um, it's growing? I do. I do. I believe it's growing. Now, again, I don't know if they'll ever tell us the numbers, but I think our, our population... I don't think we sold as many copies as other games, like... You know, like right off the bat, but the other games sell a lot and then drop off to nothing. I think we sold quite a bit. And then um, dropped off dr- the video. Dropped off a little bit the first month, and I think we're fairly steady because the people who are here now seem to be here for the long run. And, and there's a people, I get messages on Twitter from people every day saying, hey, I'm coming back. Kipster, what do you think? What uh, On the serious end of things, what have you seen? Population-wise? Yeah, are people saying, oh, this game sucks, there's nothing for me to do, they're going, where are they going, or what are they doing? Uh, yeah, I think they, uh, the population dropped off a little bit at first uh, with all the bugs in the beginning, but a lot came back, and I think it's going pretty steady now. Mm-hmm. I know a, a lot of times when people come back, the very first thing they say to me is, like, this game's almost completely different yeah. from when I launched. Yeah. Like, it, the amount of things that have changed, I mean, for the better... They're like, at launch, oh, I was so frustrated, but now it's smooth, it feels nice, you know. Yeah, it's a whole new game. It really is. It really is. I know uh, Java, Java who in the chat just says she sees more people coming back in Guild each week, like people who have been offline um, for months. Like, I did a big clear out of the Wings of Fate Friends and Family Guild, and I started getting messages like a week or two afterwards of people who came back, say, hey, I'm back now, can I get back in, kind of thing. Like, that had not been long in, like, five months have come back in our playing. I think we're going to see a lot more of that come the justice system. Oh, yeah. I think more will come back even uh, after Warlords drops for Warcraft, because, you know, everyone goes back to WoW for a little bit. I think after the, the initial maybe two or three months of that being out and then the population will settle off again the people have leveled up and go okay now this now I'm back to what I was in before and I didn't like it and I think they'll start migrating back again so what do you think the consoles will do to this game consoles you know if you if you told me this a few months ago um I would have been like, uh, it's going to be pretty huge. I think a lot of the Elder Scrolls fan base is actually on consoles. I so do I, think, too. I think the Elder Scrolls fans will come from there. I think it'll do good, but I don't think it'll do as well as, we'll just say, Warcraft numbers. Because now the PS4 in particular, I know, has two very good games, or at least very solid. Uh, Final Fantasy fourteen is very big on PS4. And Destiny. And Destiny, there you go. I've but, heard, but it's a different type of game. You know? Exactly, Destiny's different. It's like a first-person shooter MMO. I, I don't. The meatheads play Destiny. Yeah, 
you're going to get I a lot of the questers, the solo players that want to like kind of try MO for the first time. I think that's who you'll get on the console. Yeah. yeah. Um, before I would have thought it would be a little large, but now because of Final Fantasy XIV and Destiny being on there, I think we'll get a lot of the core Elder Scrolls fans. We'll definitely try it out. Um, I don't think as many MMO vets who decide they want to move to a console to play, I think they'll either stick to 14 or Destiny. I think. Do you, do you guys ever read the comments on like the Facebook or the posts on from ESO? They, it's, uh, it's all it's all console release. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, that's all they say is, "Where's my console release? Where is it? I want it now." I have I have uh, fans of the show who post on our Facebook page going, I love listening to you guys, can't wait to join once it's on console. There's quite a few people who yeah. are waiting for it to be on console. Like I said, I think we'll get a fair like we'll get a large portion of the ESO fa- or Elder Scrolls fan base. I just I think there's a little bit more competition on the consoles now than there was before. Now I don't think Destiny will hold anyone for years. I really don't. Not when there's a call, a new Call of Duty every two months. That's right. Yeah, the Destiny people will have fun until there's a new Call of Duty or Battlefield game, and then that's that's going to be it. All right. Uh, last bit of news for the um, Road Ahead article was ESO Live. If you don't watch it, there's something wrong with you <laughs> because it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it is really cool. We it talked is, about yeah. this earlier. Really like every it. two weeks they do a live show, and every two weeks. Every single one of these episodes that I've listened to, they drop little spoilers and little teasers for us every episode, which is really awesome. You know, I like when they get to know people, like the developers. I'm not interested in sound design at all, but getting to know the guy behind it, it's like, huh. You know, it's like it's like getting to know makes it personalized. The de- developers are, are us. You know, instead of like they're always behind a, a mirror and they answer one form, forum comment a year. It really feels like they're people, and I like the interactivity of getting to know different people and doing different jobs, and it's not the same old thing. I love sure. that. Well, that that it's always good to know developers. Uh, before he left Blizzard, uh, I'm sure you guys probably heard of Ghost Crawler. He was huge because he would get out there and talk to people on the forums. He was active there. He was active at their events. Honestly, he's pretty much the only developer from Blizzard that I knew before he left Blizzard. That was like. You know, when he wrote something, I followed what he was writing. He was, you know, he sounded like a pretty cool guy. So when you get to know the developers, the people making the game, it really is neat. So, all right, well, we're gonna end the uh, road ahead talk, and we're actually gonna talk about 1.5 on the PTS guys. 1.5 hit the PTS this week, and uh, fifth major content update. Hold, I'm just gonna, you know, stop there for a second. Fifth major content update since April. Wow. I mean, this game came out uh, 4-4, 2014. Wow. Is that it when is it now... came out? I thought it was, yeah, March was, yeah, March was the... Yeah, 4-4 wow. was the official launch. Those of us who got in a week ahead of time, you know, except, you know, for the early launch, early access, but 4-4 was the, the official, you know, everyone came in. And it's it's only uh, October now, halfway through October. Five content updates, and... Most of them were fairly large, except for what was it? I think the smallest one was the guild extravaganza. I don't think they did a lot in that. But the guild stores was something that's kind of neat, uh, as well as the heraldry and things of that nature. It was nice little quality of life changes. But overall, these are fairly large content patches. Yeah, 1.4. Like, was huge. Look at 1.5. It's enormous. 1.5. And this is what's really funny. The guy did an FYI. The PTS download for 1.5 was 13 gigs to download it. That wow. is a lot of data. That is why I don't play on the PTS. <laughs> it takes a while. <laughs> yeah, so fifth major um, update. In this update, they've added Veteran City of Ash, a continuation of the City of Ash dungeon, uh, implemented the f- um, improved facial animation so NPCs look more realistic when you speak to them. Thais is doing a little happy dance over here. They've also implemented the next phase of veteran rank improvements. So I know a lot of people who left the game was because of veteran rank stuff. I've actually messaged people who've left the game and go, by the way, update 5 removes veteran points. Have you really? 
Yeah, I have. Because a lot of people who I know left was they hit that brick wall of they hated the way veteran levels were done. Yeah. I, I Can I be honest here? I think they did that as an inflated content thing um, just until they got more development out to make where the leveling took forever instead of, you know, the typical 50, 100 hours, they made it 200 or 150. So that way it gave them some development time. And then now they're going backtracking and making it easier. I mean, doesn't every single game do that? Every single game makes leveling easier. Heck, oh, yeah. wow, you pay for it. Yeah, Come true. on. But like, I remember when I first started WoW, 1 to 70 took forever to level up because I started in Burning Crusade. You can get 1 to 70 in a weekend now because of they just decreased experience. Like or you crazy. can buy it. Not if you're us. Not if you're us. Well, actually, I, I don't play Warcraft like I do this game. I don't read quest text unless it's like a main storyline. Oh. <laughs> I just kill 10 rats. Got it. You know. But I, I butt sack for teeth. And yeah, none exactly. of the rats have teeth for some reason. Yeah, how do none of these rats have any teeth? <laughs> the one bit me, I hurt. I know he has teeth. I got the funniest Twitter comments from the last show about me talking about looting from their butt sacks. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. Okay. Um, I, I'm going to say this, Delty. I actually don't think that's what they were going for. Um, this is how I envisioned it. When I saw veteran ranks, I saw it as their way of gear progression in this game. Because every new piece of gear had a a veteran rank requirement. So when you were leveling up, I took 50 as being max level. But veteran ranks were a way of, I guess, what's the word I'm looking for here? It's the gear grind, but it's a different one. Usually, yeah. Yeah, but they needed a way of limiting the way of getting gear because crafting is such a good like in other games crafting wasn't as good as it is in this game okay like you could be essentially a fully geared out raider in this game if there were no restrictions to you being able to get the gear i think this was a way of them artificially uh, limiting how how you get gear like i could level up a, a nightblade to 50 like well delta you could do it in like a week or less, you know, and then you could be fully geared out and ready to do Serpent Trial in the, you know, if you had a maxed out crafter. The way I see it now is this was a way of them preventing people from just maxing out a character to 50 and then just throwing the best gear on them and being done. This was them having to earn the experience to wear the new gear. Kind of like every time you hit a veteran rank, it was like clearing a new raid content or new dungeon content where you could get better gear. That's how I saw it. Boring as hell. (laughs) That's, I think, part of the problem was in their minds, they seen this as a way of limiting gear because crafting was so good. But all people saw this as, I don't think people saw it as gear progression. They saw it as leveling and it was boring. I saw it as gear progression and it didn't really bother me. But that's the way I looked at it. Days I know, looked at it the same way, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so veteran levels didn't bother me the same way it did to other people. But when I was 50, I'm like, I'm max level. I'm just now gearing up. Um, okay. Uh, next up, what they added is they're introducing dungeon scaling and solo instance scaling in this update. So you can go back and visit some of your favorite dungeons. And they've also implemented new undaunted enclaves and pledges. And you can perform them every 20 hours. What an odd number. 20 hours? No, actually, a lot of games do well, that. Isn't, yeah, isn't that just... the uh, is that the world of the Tamriels? Is that a uh, Nern's time? Is that why they did 20? I don't know why they did 20, to be honest. I, I, that's I what would... the horse timer is. Right, is that like Tamriel's timer or something? No, that's real time. Yeah. 20 hours, you can... I know, but it is, like, is the day in Tamriel... 20 hours is what I'm saying. Is oh. that why they did 20? Like I don't know. I never paid attention. Uh, I didn't pay attention to it either, but it is funny that you did mention the horse stuff is 20. That is true, because every time I said it, like if I go to work at like 8 a.m. and I feed my horse, it's ready by 6 a.m. or <laughs> whatever the case may be the next day. I'm like, well, if it were 24 hours, it should be ready at 8 o'clock again, but it's actually available earlier. Mm-hmm. It is 20 mm-hmm. hours. That's weird. Interesting. Uh, crafters have a lot to look forward to as well. You'll be able to undertake certification as well as crafting writs and survey reports once you've been certified. 
which is pretty awesome. Last but certainly not least, you can check out new chat bubbles. Yeah. All right, let's talk about each one of these things in, in, in detail. Veteran City of Ash. They, you start. What do you think about Veteran City of Ash? Did you like the first City of Ash? I don't remember the first City of Ash. You were with the drunk. Bosmar, the entire area oh, was right. on fire. We talked about that last time with, with the, the trees. and The, the giant trees, trees, everything's on fire. And then the lava at the end and the portal and yep. someone getting sucked in. Don't I... spoil it, bro. Well, that's how the original one was. How is it a spoiler? I don't know. Uh, By this point, I would hope everyone's done the original. I don't know. There could be people. Look at TS Fangirl. She's not in the chat right now, I don't think, but she she levels slower than us. Well, then I apologize (laughs) to everyone, okay? No, I'm just kidding. I think she did that one already. But I I don't like the Bosmer, so (sighs) I... Don't really care if their city gets burned to the ground. Okay. Yeah. That's... Are you a Daedra worshiper? Maybe. All right. You told us to be worried the last time we looked. Maybe. Kipster, how about you? What do you think about Veteran City of Ash? I thought that the original, when I first played it, was the most amazing dungeon I'd ever seen. It was everything was on fire. There's huge trees everywhere. Uh, I'm so excited for the for the veteran version. I can't wait to play it. Nice. And Delty, what about you, good sir? I agree with Kipster. If it's anything like the Crypt of Hearts, you know, mm-hmm. difficulty um, and fun as far as the mechanics go, I, I love it. I couldn't find anyone in the PTS to do it when I was had some time free, but I'll wait and we'll try it out with the team on, uh, you know, when it gets released, but I'm excited for it. And actually, you know, I'm actually going to piggyback right off you, Delty, because that's what I wanted to say as well. I guess I should rephrase it, because before Kipster, Deltia, you, you guys know me, and you, you guys also play the content. I love difficult content. Like, I love it. But ESO didn't really deliver difficult content in terms of the rating scene, at least with the first two trials, which we'll talk about a little later. Um, like, they weren't. They were just, they're simple. They're, they're not hard at all. But the veteran dungeons were always something like veteran crypt of hearts like you could get random people in there um random people in there to do the trials and not really experience much issue or whatever the veteran mode dungeons were wicked difficult well how about i think we did it with kipster yeah the, the one boss yeah. on the platform with the fire trails and we died for an hour straight oh yeah that was the one wasn't it yes mm-hmm. it was i i don't remember what it was called but that that dungeon. Oh, that was Vaults of Madness. Yeah, yeah that was, was a level 50. That was a level 50 dungeon until we found out you could cheese it by hiding in the little enclaves. <laughs> but that, that was It was difficult. difficult. I think they should remove that or make it so that the fire patterns go into the enclaves. Okay, we, we, need, we need some kind of leeway here. I, no? like, I like difficult <laughs> make me cry stuff, okay? Like, I want to hate myself. Don't That's, you? <laughs> no, I, I don't at the moment. I quite love myself. Thanks. Oh, I know. Gotta think high of yourself, I guess. Um, but yeah, the veteran dungeons were always something that excited me because there were pretty much no heart holds bar. They wanted to be difficult. Well, as long as there cool. are no spiders in the new veteran city of Ash, I'm. I'm I don't good. think there were any spiders in the last one either. But you see, every dungeon that you say that anybody <laughs> says to me, "Oh, there's no spiders in here, Thais. You're fine." <laughs> There's always spiders, especially if it's a dungeon that there's no you reason need to there start, should be spiders. There's, there's always spiders. I think you need to start focusing on damage. That way you don't play such a critical role as a healer. That way if there are spiders and you start freaking out, we don't all die. Well, yeah, you're, you're, you're going to all die. Bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't it Kipster who lured the gigantic one yep. to me and then uh-huh. stood there Maybe. while we all died? <laughs> <laughs> yep. You were so freaked out, you ran out of the room. <laughs> we had no... He- I'm sitting there on my Templar, just doing whatever I can. I'm like, she's not even in the room anymore, Kipster's guys. laughing, I'm crying, everyone's dying. But it was, you know... It was she great. didn't have the nicest words to say about you at that point in time, Kip. <laughs> oh, I believe it. The, the edited version, he's such a jerk! But you can edit that to be a little bit more R-rated later. <laughs> Explicit. <laughs> Explicit rated later. It was fun, though, and I love the dungeons. Like, my goodness, we did the 
first three dungeons, which, by the way, Rana Kip, we might need you to do some of the other ones later. Because I don't think we've done anything more than the first three. No, I think we've leveled up twice since then. Yeah. Anyway. It's going to be VR5 for those, but... Oh, VR5? Gotcha. Next set is VR5. We're getting close. Um, we just hit VR4. We're getting close. Okay. Don't worry. We'll move it. All right. Um, but with that being said, like we spent a lot of time in the veteran dungeons. A lot of time. Just doing those three. It was hours. Like six hours doing them. And it was just a lot of fun. Because they were difficult. They were fun. The mechanics were interesting. Most of the mechanics you couldn't just cheese. Yeah, I liked it. So I'm excited for Tavash. So next up on uh, update five, improve facial animations. So Thais, go ahead. I'm gonna let you rant on this one. Are we gonna read it or? No, no. Just rant on what you oh, think about. I I cannot wait. I'm so excited. Already the quests feel mm. alive, and talking to the NPCs, you feel like they're real people. And I already get the sense that they tried very hard to give the, a lot of the characters animations, especially the one woman who just looked so annoyed when we were talking to her. <laughs> so to have this updated will mean so much to me because we, we sit and we, we talk to everybody. Yeah. We read everything. This is a lot of our gameplay is the immersion. So implementing the, the updated facial animations is just amazing to me. I can't wait to get in and, and talk to some new NPCs. We still have lots of zones to quest through, mm -hmm. so we'll really get to experience this. I feel bad for a lot of players, though, who are already max veteran levels, who don't really do any other quests. They have no no way to really experience this. <coughs> <Don't you? laughs> it makes me sad Space that bar. they won't be able to see this. And <laughs> I just, I, I can't wait for it. Nice. You cray cray. You cray cray I really girl. hope they fixed, though, the, uh, the talking jaw move, where when they're talking, they're like, jaw moves over to the right. Just, I, for nope, whatever reason. That's a problem reason. with the animation rigging of the, of the skeleton. If you've seen any animations, there's like a little internal skeleton. But when they talk about it, I don't... It just wanna, shifts. It well, does. Yeah. And they get that little side jaw like they were in a fight with Tyson and got, you know, their jaw dislocated. Mm -hmm. yeah. What about got their ear? Their what? Their ear. Their ear? I, I haven't gotten that one. I have gotten the one, though, Tyson, where... Tyson, they... it was a joke. Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah, I know. Social commentary. Sorry, he... that... that yeah. I, well, I get it now. Okay. <laughs> All right. Da -ding, ding, ding. You're not going to ask me what I think of it? No, I'm not. Because I already know what you think about it. Yeah, you're not excited for it. You think it's a waste of resources. <laughs> yeah. See, we're done. We're done. <laughs> well, are you going to ask Kipster at least? How about you, Kipster? How do you feel about this? Uh, I feel exactly the same as Deltia. Yeah! Probably the main reason I listen to this show is to get your guys' experience on that stuff. Because I missed it all. Because <laughs> you just didn't do it. through the quests. So, yeah. Space bar. Nice. You really you didn't listen to like any any not a single one. I started out by listening to the main quests, and then I just stopped that too. It's <laughs> gotta, get, gotta get the you next know, level. Gotta get the next my level. Alt characters because if you see any of the YouTube stuff that I do for like my alts, I skip all the other quests because I've already done them already. But I never skip the main story or the Fighters Guild stuff because I think it our Mages Guild because I think they're fantastic. Those I never say. I sit there and listen to it all. Oh, because like the the voice acting is so good, and there's a bunch of times, especially when it came to Bala, I keep coming back to this. If they had the these upgraded facial animations, you know, when this comes out, just make a character. It takes you like ten minutes to get to I'm her. I'm gonna have to just so I. Is it so really can... that much better? It's it's. Uh, is it to, really? To... Like, when I saw it, I'm like, I can't tell anything. To us, it will be. We'll be able to I tell. actually was very impressed by it. Really? During the QuakeCon, I was impressed by it. I was like, what? Lot. So their upper lip goes up a little bit more? <laughs> Who gives a crap? I mean, You see on. a lot on the... <laughs> my favor is when you watch the Khajiit one, and watching the facial animations on the Khajiit are fantastic. Oh, you guys are crazy. I want to see the pain in Bala's face when she talks about what Tear happened eater. to her. <laughs> uh, nice. No, really I actually think it, it's really neat. It really is. So. Bala is the only person I can't feed on her tears because I just feel so bad for her. <laughs> Anybody else, all the Khajiit, I will, I will feast on their tears. The Bosmer, the Altmer. 
You know, I think that I think Kipster gave us a new marketing technique. Don't listen to your quest. Listen to our show. We'll talk about it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Um, there is a uh, a note here that the feature is not supported on Windows XP or OS SX. Um, I don't Linux? know why you'd be using those anyway, but they won't work. So, yeah. Just so you know, XP's been end of life now for like two years, so... Maybe there's still people who use it. I don't know. They stopped I, updates for XP too now. Yeah, XP stopped like two years ago, so you're not getting updates anymore. You know, I'm the tech guy talking to you here. Does that actually matter? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It does. <laughs> oh yeah, it does. Yeah. Well, my, our computers update every other day. I, well, I, I Vista, really don't know why. Actually, Vista it's end just... of life, or not Vista? We don't use Vista. Oh my goodness, seven end of life's in two years. Oh. 2016, it's end of life, oh. and I will not go to Windows 8. They I will add terrible. The, it's they not terrible. I will, it's no, terrible. I will not use Windows 8. I actually enjoyed Vista. I probably was the only I person. will go to Linux they, before I go to Windows 8. I had no problems with Vista. None. They, what? You're crazy. I mean, come on. Right. All, all the <laughs> problems everyone said they had with Vista, I never experienced a single one. It was fine. My <laughs> Vista ran perfectly. <sighs> But it used like 30% of your CPU just to run. Yeah, but it never slowed me down. Well, that's probably because you only played Farmville. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to move off of that little rabbit trail because you'll get me talking on that and it'll be a mess. Veteran rank improvements. Tell your friends who quit the game because they didn't like veteran ranks because I think this is going to be awesome. Um They've been tracking experience gains past maximum veteran rank on all these accounts in preparation for the champion system. Veteran ranks will now earn, or will now be earned by experience points rather than veteran points. I think this will actually make veteran levels go much faster. Well, it's one point. It's like five times as fast. They they said that it'd be like one point four million per experience per level now. Mm-hmm. Instead of what five million at the year twelve or thirteen, so you're going to look at five times as fast. And um, here's something else that people complained about: when veteran, when you earn a veteran rank, you will now be rewarded with an attribute point and a skill point. As yeah. I do my Doctor Evil finger to the to the mouth. Mm. More health. However, they are going to reduce the amount of health, magic, and stamina awarded by veteran ranks by 35% to compensate by the new attribute points rewarded. No more health. <laughs> no more health. It, honestly, the bonuses you got weren't much. So 35% reduction, you won't see much of a difference. And you'll be able to determine where you want the points to go. So. I like the skill points, so that's going to give me a lot more just to play with. Well, 14 yeah. more. <laughs> Love it. Right, so, or 13 more, rather, I guess. Still, them numbers. Them numbers. Uh, yeah. no. Kipster, what do, what do you think about this point? Better. Uh, I'm already V14 on two characters. I guess if I decided to level a third one, it'd be a lot faster. Okay. But uh, I think it's a good thing for the game in general. Good thing if you had friends that left, because I know we were talking about this a few weeks ago. You're like, all your friends left. Well, it might be a good... Aww. good. Uh, we're still your friend, Kipster. We still love you. Um, <laughs> but a good good talking point going, hey, what made you quit? You didn't like veteran points? I think this might might change because now people will feel like, like, you know, people who did look at it as leveling will now get rewarded for leveling and want to continue. Wait a minute. Did I just hear Kipster correctly? He's already VR 14 on two characters? Yeah, me too. Tell you how many you have. Like 12? I have two VR tens and two VR fourteens. Oh my gosh! Yeah, well, he was farther along than me. That's for sure. That's I, crazy. I played well, the game. Hey, a look lot. at look at how fast we gained experience in Cyrodiil when we just did our little thing. Like we gained almost a full veteran rank in Cyrodiil alone. Let's just say I'm not looking at facial animations. I mean, <laughs> taking away from <laughs> taking away from reading quest text, okay. There's certain questing is actually not the best way to earn experience in this game. If you want it's to max out, and get it's there, never been questing is actually way. one of the lowest ways to get experience. I, yeah. I don't, I don't care. I don't care. I'm super excited for facial yeah. animation. No, there's nothing wrong with that. But in terms of and more books, we need more books. More books. 
in terms of actual raw leveling, most people don't even touch quest. If you, if their entire thing is to get to max level for whatever reason, there are better ways to do it than questing. Questing, even skipping quest text takes longer than doing certain other methods. Running uh, public dungeons, things Killing of that nature. Stuff. Killing stuff. Shot as tier is a big one once you hit veteran ranks. Like, there's other ways. I mean, look at... Even Final Fantasy XIV had, uh, had ways to level. Questing was actually the worst way to level. The fastest way to level was through fate grinding or dungeon running or something like that. There were better ways to level than actually following the storyline. It's just questing by default is much slower. All right, next up, dungeon scaling. Dungeons will now scale to the level of the group leader with some caveats. Non-veteran dungeons will not scale below the level they are currently introduced, but will scale up to veteran rank 12. All veteran dungeons, with the exception of veteran City of Ash, are now available from veteran rank 1 to veteran rank 12. Dungeons will not scale up to veteran rank 13 and 14 at this time. Dungeon scaling is determined by the group leader upon the group entering the dungeon. The scaling does not change the level of the group leader does, or if the group leader changes, once the dungeon has been set. Item drops will also scale up either to the level of the monster or the receiving player character, whichever is lower. For example, a level 28 monster is defeated, dropping an item for a level 26 player character and a level 30 player character. The item levels will be 26 and 28, respectively. Go ahead and read the next part as well, because it kind of tails into it. Okay, solo scaling. Solo instances will now scale to your level with some caveats. Solo instances do not scale below the level they are introduced. For example, Thizrini Arena begins scaling from level 42. Solo instances do not scale past veteran 12 at this time. Solo scaling is determined by your level upon entering the instance and remains there for the session. What areas in the game are solo besides, like, the main quest? And, and some that, of, like, the Fighters Guild stuff. Does that mean you, you major can solo... Skills, fighters guild? My, major Skills Fighters So if someone doesn't actually do the quest up until they hit veteran rank and go back, it might actually make it difficult. So you don't get a choice to whether it scales? No, I think it just scales. Oh, that's... I am one of those people that like being overpowered when I go into something. I don't care about the drops. <laughs> <laughs> she just wants to smash face and feel she like wants she's... fat loots, yo. I, no, I don't want the fat loots. I just want to smash face. That's, that's she all wants I to want feel to do. powerful. Exactly. So, you, <gasps> so then you need to be uh, a guard in the um, new expansion or whatever. So you can just nuke little VR ten, uh, little ten levels that are trying oh. to steal from each other. Oh no, no, no! I I have to you know listen to the night mother and steal everything inside. Hmm. Well, shouldn't. The Night Mother would actually tell you to kill everything in oh, sight, not steal. Well, you know what? Either way, I'm going to be okay. a deviant. I think this is a great change as a whole because, I mean, you get a skill point for finishing dungeons. And, I mean, rewards, like running back and doing low-level stuff, you'll get better rewards, better gold. The stuff will sell for more. I'm sorry, a level 16 sword does not sell as much as a level 50. It might not be a lot, but... You get a hundred of them, they sell fairly well. So, I'm liking this. Liking it a lot. I mean, look how much money we made in Cyrodiil when we were just running around. We just sold all of our, our whites and greens. I made, like, eight grand in, like, an afternoon. I was able to upgrade my bank bags. Yeah, just because they were all ranked at VR whatever they were. They scaled down to us or whatever, so they're, like, VR 5 or something like that. And all that stuff sold for, like, 60 gold a piece or more. Sometimes more, 860 to 80. And we got lots of them. So, really neat. Kipster, what do you what do you think about this since you're our certified rent a Kip anyway? Uh, can't wait. Awesome. Aw, I mean, he's not going to be overpowered either. Uh, oh, no, he actually, can, he's going to have to be the you party wanna leader. Be, if he you want to be dragon overpowered, just he plays like a dragon a level in. <laughs> They're not overpowered be... anymore. Dragonites? No, maybe in PvP, but PvE, they're limp. They're... Well, yeah, I mean, well, tanking are great, but... Yeah, that's like all they're good for now, that and the buff guy. That's about it. <laughs> you sit in the back and buff. You're like a vanilla yep. paladin. Just sit there and manage blessings. That's it. That's all Engulfing you Engulfing flames and igneous shields, sir. <laughs> that's all you're allowed hey, to do. Hey, them, shield, them shields hit hard, though. Fragmented shields. 
Uh, used to. They nerfed that too now. So, I mean, we're, DKs suck now. <laughs> oh my god. Just play PvP and hit one button and reflective scales over four, four seconds and you won't die. It's fine. Yeah, that's why I rolled the Nightblade. Nightblade. Um, yeah. Templars are still awesome. No. <laughs> <laughs> Healers. If you want to be OP in dungeons, just bring a low level and make them group leader, and then it'll be like 26 or whatever it is. Oh so if my you want to feel OP, base, it scales to whoever the group leader is. So when you go into like a dungeon, just bring in the lowest level available. Like What oh, is it, like so... 15 for Fungal Grotto, and everything will be 15. Oh, just they have to be the group leader. So well, how, how is that going to work? work? Yeah. Like plus or minus two levels, I thought. That's all it went. Uh, no, these, everything scales up to VR12. Everything oh. goes all the way up to... Non-veteran dungeons will scale all the way to veteran rank 12. Hmm. And oh, all veteran dungeons will now scale between 1 and veteran rank 12. With the exception so, like, of Steven Ash. Spindle Clutch will be all V14, V12 mobs. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, the only thing I'm kind of upset about this is Crypt of Hearts, because it's difficult. Uh, if you can scale it down to VR1, I don't know if it will be as difficult. It probably won't be. Yeah. Well, I beat it. It was uphill both ways. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, Grandpa. <laughs> I'm the Grandpa Emma. When I was, when I was, we didn't have any quests. You just had to kill mud crabs. Hey, when I played, we didn't have any quests. My first two MMOs were Ultima Online and Dark Age of Camelot. Dark Age of Camelot had a total of when I left the game, and this was after several expansions, a total of 60 quests. Oh, yeah? Well, guess what? I used to play text-based MMOs. Take that. <laughs> you were a mud. I'm kidding. Nice. I used to play muds. Those were fun. <laughs> All right, guys. We're really showing our age here. You guys, no, are, you guys are nerds. I, I didn't say I don't even want to hear anything from you, Miss Korean MMO free-to-play girl. I Whoa. love Korean MMOs. Miss Maple Story. I love Maple Story. Oh God! <laughs> oh, and there were no quests in that either. It was just grinding. So can yeah. I join in this combo? Yeah, with one button. What are you, a dragon knight? <laughs> <laughs> I'm That's sitting there good. watching her, and she kills everything with one button. I'm like, what are you doing? Well, I'm farming in the zone. Well, you're hitting one <laughs> button, and it kills everything on the screen. <laughs> yeah, this is what I do for like 12 hours a day. Wow. Get one of those four-hour experience tickets, and I just sit there in the middle of a uh, middle of the zone, just spam one button. Grind them my whole life. That's not even a game. That's oh, Cookie great. Clicker. <laughs> now, Cookie Clicker, you don't even have to touch the game. <laughs> All right. Again, we got sidetracked again. Undaunted Enclaves. Undaunted. Edges. Undaunted. <laughs> we are undaunted. Oh, my Stand goodness. Stand the undaunted. Undaunted at the Enclaves are welcoming new members. Yeah. Follow the invitation to the Enclave to join up, which you get mailed to you right away, by the way. The Undaunted have established Enclaves near the capitals in each alliance. At these locations, members of the Undaunted may acquire quests known as pledges, which they will send you into various dungeons to defeat enemies uh, within. Each type of pledge may be performed every 20 hours. There are currently two types of pledges. One will send you into a veteran, and one will send you into a non-veteran dungeon, respectively. Non-veteran pledges become available at 45, level 45, and veteran pledges unlock at VR1. Successfully completing pledge results in a key, the quality of which is determined by both the type of pledge and whether optional objectives have been fulfilled. These keys are used to open chest at the Undaunted Enclaves for a chance at various special rewards, including unique item sets and more. Undaunted Enclaves also include Undaunted Quartermasters who carry a stock of general goods particularly useful to dungeoning adventure. I am so proud of you right now. You read that almost perfectly. Word Good boy. Perfect. Oh, wow. I'm Way a cookie. to go. <laughs> Good boy. All right. Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so flustered, I don't even know where I was at anymore. <laughs> um, Deltia, I know you, good sir, like, I re you asked me to, like, retweet something, like, the second it happened. Because you did a guide for this, right? Or is it out? Well, not yet, but I was, like, the I 
I was like the first person on the PTS. They didn't even announce it was open yet, and I was like the guy <laughs> clicking, clicking, clicking. He's sitting there clicking, logging, <laughs> Like, logging. oh, yeah. So I went in there, and, of course, I couldn't do the pledges. But anyways, it's cool. I, I You get like a starter one. To, you know, open a silver chest, and it has like soul gems and a piece of gear and stuff. Um, soul gems are always helpful in dungeons. You I, need lots of them. This is, well, I don't. I'm a dragon well, knight or a sword. So. <laughs> I don't. I'm a dragon <laughs> But anyways, it's cool because it's it's random dungeons. So the one I got to do was like Elden Hollow or something. It's gonna make dungeons fun again because you're gonna have to do them. It's gonna explore and open content that people haven't done and give more of incentive to go back and do it. Now I didn't get to see what the gold rewards are. I would be curious to see if it's like you know some super rare loot that was actually worth getting. Hopefully it is. Like, even the mask wow. or whatever. I imagine those set bonuses yeah. from the Undaunted gear. I, I don't imagine you get one every time you open it. I think you have a chance, and the chance gets better the better your key is. So maybe if you get those good Undaunted sets, you'll be like, hey, look what I got. Yeah, now that I can do them on four characters, you know, day. Grinding my whole life. <laughs> 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 All right, Thais, you look like you had something you wanted to say. Go ahead. What do you think it's about It's a rebuttal, Undaunted? I'm sure. I disagree. Oh. Do you disagree on, with Paige. Delta just because it's Delta, or do you disagree with the idea of pledges as a whole? Both. What? Okay, explain your premise for this. Knowing that I know the type of games you play in both Warcraft and Final Fantasy, you do daily dungeons because they have the daily, and this is nothing Wait, but different. That's, but that's because I have to. And in uh-huh. both of those games, they made it a necessity. Okay. To accomplish some task, you needed to do the daily dungeons. I just bit my tongue. <sighs> okay, so while she recovers, Kipster, okay. what do you think? All right. Uh, I'm, I'm good. Um, Don't stop her. Don't stop her. <laughs> um, so I just, I, I feel like the rewards aren't going to be worth it for me to spend time doing old dungeons, especially since we are required to scale to the dungeon now. And it's just it's gonna make it long and annoying. And if you don't fulfill the other objectives, you're not gonna get a good key, which means that the items you get are gonna be crappy. And I don't, I don't know. I guess I have to see it in action first to. to so you're really saying you don't determine. think you don't think the rewards are good enough? I don't, I don't know. Uh, have you seen the rewards? Be- oh before, my god! Before we have you kept- analyze her. Because I have some Ooh, kip, voice kip, words kip, that kip. I want to say as well. <laughs> kip, kip, I kip, have kip. Screenshots. I have screenshots. I do have some things I want to say, but I want to hear Kipster's opinion first. Kipster, go ahead. What do you think about this? This is my favorite part of Update 5. This is what I'm waiting for. I can't wait. I wanted to jump in there so bad today and do some of these pledges, but uh, nobody wanted to heal for me. <laughs> but I uh, actually agree with Kipster. Well, hold on. What, what, was in the, what was in the thing? Tell us. Uh, well, in the gold chest, you have a chance of getting uh, the shoulders for the two-piece set uh, for the the head that drops oh, in the dungeon. Oh, for the piece sets. Yeah. So what, 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 what were they? What were the set bonuses? Uh, hold on. Let me bring up the screenshot I took today. Oh, this is going to be sick. <laughs> I'm holding my breath, Kip. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Screenshots. Those, those, are good. those are the wrong shots. <laughs> <laughs> wrong folder. Wrong folder. Oh, Under folder. <laughs> Malibueth, the Scourger's Visage. It's a helmet. Adds 129 max health. That's the enchantment on it. Impenetrable. Uh, part of the Scourge Harvester set. One set item adds 129 max health. Two set item. Six uh, percent chance when hit to create a beam that steals six hundred ninety-three health from target. What? Sounds like <laughs> a sick tank piece. Right That's there. a yeah, impenetrable. It is so awesome. That is sick for PvP, dude. Oh it looks, wow! It looks sweet too. It's just like this awesome-looking like helmet with horns on it. It's dude, can you link that thing. and go? I think and, that's uh, part teams- of the things we were talking about before with the undaunted, the, the the beast helms and stuff like that. The helms drop from the dungeons. But only the shoulders, if you want the two-piece, so you have, to, you have to get lucky from the Undaunted. That's sick. I'm going to get every yeah. single one. Oh, so that, so there's only a chance of them dropping. So, okay, so so yeah, my comment still stands. Because I have the worst luck in MMOs. So I'll I'm have them all. Anything. Like, I'll get them all in one chest. I dislike <laughs> you so much. I'm going to be doing so many dailies, it's going to be disgusting. Okay. The, the game just hates your gear. I, I understand what you're... And I'm going to say this. 
we talked about this last week about sandbox MMOs and how the best MMOs are actually theme park MMOs with sandboxes in them. Because I'm sorry, other than a handful, and I, I include myself in this, most players aren't creative. I'm not. I'm. Uh, uh, it's terrible. I'm not creative. I can't think my own way out of, you know, I can create some of this. I suck at Minecraft. All my stuff is, like, square, blocky. And, oh, look, like I dug a hole. You know, that's me. You play Minecraft. That's that's your first Well, mistake. actually, I, I, I played a little bit of, um, what is the other game? Well, anyways, okay, keep going. And, yeah, regardless. <laughs> There's a few a few creative people out there who can do amazing stuff and props to them. But most people don't have that. And my thing with dailies is, like you said, you feel forced into doing it. The problem is, where do you cross the line between forcing a player to, or making a player feel like they're forced to do something versus letting the player decide to do it themselves? Because I'm sorry, I seen the same guy when I was running around on my Nightblade try to find another DPS. It wasn't even a tank or healer. A DPS for Fungal Grotto for two and a half hours. Because no one wanted to do it after the first clear. Right. There's no point. Yeah, like, no one wanted... I felt bad for the poor guy. If I was high enough level, I would have went. Because for two and a half hours, the poor guy was spamming in Stone Falls looking for a, DP, a DPS, which are... Everyone's a DPS. And you really didn't switch characters to help him out. Well, I was doing something else. I was recording the the Agelis' saga. That's why I didn't stop. You evil person. Uh, I felt bad, but not bad enough to switch to <laughs> <laughs> Not that bad. Not that bad. <laughs> um, but it's, it's... I don't look at it as forcing a player. I look at it as incentivizing the player to do it. Exactly. Because players, if you don't incent, if you don't give them the carrot on the stick, I'm sorry. That's the problem. Why I think most most sandbox MMOs don't get big. I know Eve Online is still pretty big, but in terms of population, I think ESO has a bigger population than Eve because of the creative. Only the really creative people and the people with really big guilds or whatever corporation, whatever they're called in that game, succeed. Because most people, if they're not handheld or given a carrot on the stick to follow, they won't do it. They don't have the initiative to go out and do something themselves. They need to feel rewarded. And this is a way of making people feel rewarded and incentivized into playing the content. So that poor to sit out there for two and a half hours. If the rewards are good enough, I'll, I'll, I'll totally do it. Com okay. So yours isn't so much a force to do it like in... I, I just, I want a reason to spend my time doing... Uh, old content there instead of the other words I was going to use. I, I want a reason to okay. have to revisit and, and this content. I, I agree, but okay, I, I I totally agree. Hence why I didn't log over and, and help the other guy. Um, oh, but see, that should have just been satisfaction of self to to help another player. I like myself enough. I don't <laughs> want to do Fungal Grotto again. Not, But here's the thing. What incentivizes you now to help that poor guy? Because I'm a good person. Okay. What incentivize you just to do it because you want to do it? No. Okay. There's no incentive for you to go back. You have an incentive. You helping that guy is your incentive. You're a good person. I'm, I'm not. I'm fine with this. <laughs> um, but you have a reason to go back and do it. What about uh, Delty? If Delty is calling for it, you wouldn't help him. Right? That's because it's Delta. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> what incentivizes you to go back and do level 15 Fungal Grotto with Deltia? Yeah, because he's Deltia, and I guess he's okay. He's my <laughs> favorite meathead pvp -er. You have to be incentivized in some way, and most players are not incentivized if you leave them to their own means. They get bored, they get lost, and they're done. I think it's fantastic, and this is, I feel the game needs dailies as a whole, because they're a reason to log back in the game. Again, if you listen to, like, the last week or when we talked about this, I went on to a rant with, as much as people hate dailies, dailies are one of the best things they ever put in MMOs, because it keeps people coming back into the game every day. I know it's the idea of, oh, it's a daily, I don't want to do it, ugh. But when you get in there, then you notice your friends are doing the dailies, too, because they have the same mentality of, oh, I'm doing my dailies. And it's like, oh, well, while you guys are all here, let's do something else. And it gets you into the content. Yeah, now, how many of us have met 
one of the best friends in the world through dailies. I know <laughs> I've met some of the best people I've ever gamed with. They were doing dailies. I didn't know if they were PvE or PvP or next thing you know, hey, let's go do dailies. Ten minutes later, we're off doing a dungeon or whatever, and life's good, and become best friends. I mean, that's the way to meet people. I actually have friends who, I wouldn't call it a daily, but it was essentially uh, essentially the same thing. It was grinding for experience in Dark Age of Camelot. She's still, like, I, I followed her for, like, ten years. Um, it's kind of a creeper thing. I know, it is creepy. I'm out in the bushes. But no, we've been friends for a, quite a long time, and we actually met doing essentially a daily grind, and not the person you're thinking of. It's... <laughs> I know who she's looking at me with this little look like. I know who you're thinking. I'm like, no, it's not her. <laughs> I, I, just, just um, I have never made friends from doing dailies. Because after, really? after I have someone to do dailies with, I leave them because like, I hate dailies so much. I, I, I <laughs> oh, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. At my grind. How, I think you were out there the other night. That's essentially a grindy kind of piece of crap. But that's not a daily, it's, though. Oh, it might as no, well be. That's, <laughs> so different. You're that grinding is, for a reward. That is so different because Beast Tribe dailies, you get an awesome mount, you get a pet. Those like are dailies. So and, 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 and this game, you get awesome helmet that get, lets you summon a you beam get, that sucks you get health. A helmet. Ugh. That's it. Was like shoulders. A I don't want. Like oh, face. Hey, so you don't. Better. You don't know. They might but add have, other rewards. I have made great friends though, out of being the helpful player that logs onto their high level tune to help other players. I have made lots of friends by doing that. Okay. I've never made a friend doing that. <laughs> Since I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why you've never. I, mean, I don't. I just. I, I. I guess I really just have to see how it'll be, and and the same thing. You'll applies love to it. The next part. Hey, look, that's a perfect segue. It was. It was It was planned. Speaking of dailies, <laughs> crafters will now have crafting dailies. Crafting certi certification, writs, and survey reports. You can now undertake certification to learn the basics of the various trade skills, as well as to unlock crafting writ quests from your respective alliances. Visit the towns of Volkelgard, Davin's Watch or Daggerfall and look for newly hired crafting trainers for certification. To assist in finding them, all the red boards will also direct you to these trainers. Note, talented crafters will have the option to fast track their certification application. Once certified, you can acquire crafting writ contracts from newly constructed writ boards placed in every major city. The types of items needed for each writ are appropriate to, the, to your approximate skill level in the re relevant discipline, asking you to create specific goods and deliver them to locations in need of these supplies. Note, crafting writs may be performed every 20 hours and are available for every tier of crafting. In addition to inspiration gained from completing these quests, you will receive a package containing various materials in recognition of your contribution. There is a chance that these will, for most trade skills, include a survey report. Survey reports are similar to treasure maps in, they, in that they lead you to caches of valuable items, which in this case are clusters of high-yield harvest nodes, exclusively available to you if you possess the survey report. I think that sounds just as terrible. What? That's awesome. Crafting daily is amazing. Delphia? Crafting daily is amazing. This is going to be I, so much fun. You know, and here's the thing. Most people, most games don't actually have crafting daily. I've never heard of a crafting daily. Really? No. Really? Never heard They're of all, crafting daily. I've had them all the time in other games. No. Mm -hmm. Star what? Wars, Give me an example Conan. Of another game that had crafting dailies. Uh, craft this many items, complete this task, give it to this person. <laughs> Well, I mean, I guess if you think about it, Final Fantasy XIV had it in way of lev quest, but you people use those for leveling. I, I don't, I don't know. I, I guess pattern. other games may have done it. It's just it seems kind of weird because most of the time, in other games, crafting kind of ends once you hit max crafting. Like you don't, it's not useful once after like a little while, because other games like you know, once raiding gets in, better gears introduced, crafted gear. Other than for alts and leveling people... It's and, usually overshadowed. Yeah. Other than, of course, consumable stuff like potions and, and food and, and things like that that are consumed on a daily basis are the only things that really kind of keep going. So, well. Hmm. 
I think it's really neat. I think it's really neat. Um, yeah. Anyone have anything they want to say about this, like, in detail? I'm Basically. excited about it. I, I guess because I don't craft all that often. I mean, the last time I needed a crafting gear, I think you made it for me. Yeah, I know. That's why it excites me. <laughs> so, I just, I don't, I don't craft very often. I, and because of how we quest, I already have tons and tons and tons of mats. So that the high yield harvest nodes, things like that, I, 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 I have a lot already. It depends what those high yield, here's the thing though, those high yield harvest nodes,